all for coming. I'm Ira Sirkis, and Carol is in back. You met her when you, were, when you come in. And we're the hosts of The Art of Downsizing, Trends, Strategies, and Marketing. And just as Gary said, buying a house and selling a house now is very different from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And so what we'll do is kind of bring you up to date and maybe do a little comparison. Uh, first thing is at price trends. Um, how are things changing? And we bought our house in um, 1983 and paid full price. Now, people buying full price now would really be, that would be a bargain. But I remember it nearly killed me to pay full price because I already bought eight or 10 investment properties and the seller wouldn't budge, so I paid, we paid $129,000. And looking back on it, you know, if I paid 130, 135, would it have made a difference? Not really, because we're taking a long-term approach. We're buying it, we've lived in it for a long time. But I wanted to give you an idea how prices have changed over the years. And so the way I did it was to do a snapshot of going back about 15 years. Carol and I have been realtors all, almost 30 years. And so we've survived and thrived in all sorts of cycles of real estate. And the key is that real estate is cyclical. It goes up, it goes down, it's never stable. If you want to know what prices will be in a few years ago, if in a few years it'll be different. But I figured if we went back to the year 2000 and took a look at how prices have changed over the years, we might be able to divine what the future will bring. Now, when I looked at the sales in Berkeley last year, about 20, excuse me, about 35% of the homes were three bedroom homes. And I figured that's a good indicator. It's more than two, more than three, and we don't have a lot of, um, more than two, more than four, we don't have a lot of five bedroom homes and larger. So I looked at three bedroom homes as a benchmark. And then the next question I asked myself was, well, if I'm looking at a three bedroom home in Berkeley, will it give me information on Albany or Kensington? And so here's where we do it, and this is where I get to uh, do graphs and charts. Let's see. Perfect, it, it works. What this is, is a chart showing the median three bedroom home of Berkeley, Albany, and Kensington going back 15 years. And I'll probably, it'd be easier to point it out than the pointer. The dark bar is Berkeley, the middle bar is Albany, and the medium bar is Kensington. And what you can see is a pattern coming out. And we also see that between Berkeley and Kensington, they pretty well match. Albany's interesting because the prices are a little bit lower and sometimes a little bit higher, but they all kind of follow the same pattern. I also looked at two bedroom and four bedroom homes and they followed the same pattern as three bedroom homes. So let's investigate three bedroom homes. Um, and I'm gonna stop and ask if this is clear before I go ahead. Um, okay. So this is three bedroom homes. I wanted to simplify it so we can get a real good picture for what's going on. In 2006, the median three bedroom home price, and the median means half sold for more and half sold for less, was $814,000. Over a five year period, they dropped by 20%. Now that's a lot of money, but it's tempered by the fact that when people bought homes in Berkeley, they put down payments down. They put 20% down. And so unlike some other communities where people had nothing down, when the price dropped, they just walked away, those prices plummeted, plummeted much more than Berkeley. So we're tempered by that. Now, in the period from 2011 to 2014, the median price of a three bedroom home went up to $920,000. So over three years, the price went up by 40% uh, from 2011 and 13% from the peak in 2006. Now, what is, else does the graph tell us? We're kind of in this period here. So when else were we in a similar period? Here, and maybe here. 
And so I just put the question mark, are we peaking? I don't think we've peaked, but I think what we've had is a nice run of several years of big increases. And then for 2015, we'll probably some modest growth and maybe a little bit for 2016. But a friend of mine once said, the only good escrow is a closed escrow. <laughs> and I'll use the same expression because the only, I can't predict the future and we don't know what substantive thing will happen in the world to change things. So if you're thinking of making a move, the prices may very well be about the same for the next year or two, but we can't see what will happen in two years. So my only thing is think about doing it a little bit sooner. And that's about it. Put our expertise to work for you. These are, we represented the buyers and sellers of each one of these markers, and we look forward to helping you too. Thank you.